That a survivor? No, ma'am. Just a gas fella, drawn by the scent of the dead. And fella ain't got no kindness in his eye. No, ma'am. Just a gas fella, drawn by the scent of the dead. And fella ain't got no kindness in his eye. Kid pops him good. Kid pops him good. Kid's worked up quite a thirst by now, so that fountain looks real inviting. He sets foot inside one of Selandia's famous watering holes, an old shield's fallen from the wall. Gas fellas keep on coming out of the woodwork. That one was Maud, the tutor. Once taught the kid good manners. He never used them, though. A big old fella pops out in front of the kid. Figures he might as well. Good news is the emergency defenses still work. Bad news is they're aiming for the kid. Now the gas fella's got no one to cry to. Kid has a feeling he better get a move. The place is starting to fall. Kid just keeps running. See that core kid took was the only thing making this particular rock stay afloat. Kid flies off. Finds his lifelong friend just lying in the road. Well, it's a touching reunion. Some of them squirts birthing like crazy in a couple of corn bins. Scumbags. Scumbags. Proper story is supposed to start at the beginning. Ain't so simple with this one. Now here's a kid whose whole world got all twisted, leaving him stranded on a rock in the sky. The kid can fix up his weapons real nice. Kid's thinking, ain't that Rondi the bartender? Sure is. But the calamity got him before his drinking did. Rondi always wanted his ashes scattered here. Rondi always wanted his ashes scattered here. The air's thick, causing gas fellas to pop from their shipping cages. Kid wants out of this place by now. He steals the city's heart. Might as well. Peacemakers don't take kindly to vandals. Tough looking fella stands in the way of something tougher still. And then he falls to his death. I'm just fooling. And kid's gotta move forward, not down. Kid almost falls. Again. Kid just rages for a while. He sees what's left of the rippling walls. Years of work undone in an instant. In the calamity, Kid finds an alloy that'll strengthen his hammer. An old repeater drops out of the sky. Got a holder still to spin up the chamber. Kid looks down to see he's been hurt. Ain't the first time. No, ma'am. It's a gas fella. Forced out from underground. A school of squirts tunnels up around him. Must have fled here from the mines. Inside's old Rondi, the bartender. The calamity got him for his drinking did. The security takes him for a petty thief. Wham! Just like that. Kid stirred up quite a commotion by now. Kid ain't never been in a bar fight like this before. Special delivery. Gas fellas. Right back at ya. Kid sees the weight of the bastion out the window. It's a bit of a drop. He gets a good look at things on his way down. The calamity. Tore the world to pieces. Spared hardly nothing. Least it spared the kid. He lands on top of a breaker's bow. And it ain't broke. He lands on top of a breaker's bow. And it ain't broke. He finds the distillery. Right next to the arsenal. Tough part of town. A distillery. One sip of these spirits and the kid will feel like a new man. An arsenal. Here the kid can choose the best tools for the job. An old ferry barge sends the kid on his way. The bastion's real close now. Kid takes a chunk of alloy. Robs a scumbag of his last meal. The smell of barley and spoiled blueberries fills the air. Kid maybe shouldn't have done what he just did. Kid puts him out of his misery. He finds the core to the wharf district. Proper store is supposed to start at the beginning. Ain't so simple with this one. Proper store is supposed to start at the beginning. Ain't so simple with this one. Proper store is supposed to start at the beginning. Ain't so simple with this one. Now here's a kid whose whole world got all twisted, leaving him stranded on a rock in the sky. Now here's a kid whose whole world got all twisted, leaving him stranded on a rock in the sky. He gets up. He just starts running. Ground forms up under his feet as it point in the way. He don't stop to wonder why. Well, guess who won? He spots a battered old shield. Almost feel bad for those things. And the kid, by now he's feeling plenty bad for himself. Sometimes he just need a drink. Sets off for the bastion, where everyone agreed to go in case of trouble. He runs into one of them meese, like the ones from the ghost stories, but sadder. The kid's on edge, and so is the meese. So the two of them have at it. Well, guess who wins? Clang! Kid lifts that shield just in the nick of time. Kid keeps on hammering away, like he's gonna find answers inside all them meese. 
The Mies turns savage as he takes their prize, but on the inside, they're as soft as sin. Some of the poor things just can't take it no more. Kid spies a good perch for some target practice. He knows he should draw the string all the way back. Wasn't long before the kid could loose an arrow, strong and true. That whirl drops him off in what's left of a big old vine apple farm. These apples ain't the tasty kind. They come in a bunch of nasty flavors. Now spitting seeds ain't ever been polite, but apples spitting their own seeds? Now that's just crass. It's a bunch of them fellas, digging for fragments. He hurries toward the bastion, lest they become another fragment for a fella. With gluters gone, those gas fellas fizzled out with him. More squirts start coming out of the woodwork. Picks up a few pointers from a dusty old tome. Takes his old friend for a spin. Can't perform no more tricks without them black tonics. Well, down he goes. Down toward the bastion. Shield keeps him safe. But if he blocked at just the last moment. Kid's so busy running, he almost forgets to try that bow of his. His hands are shaking, but he's gotta keep steady. Bad time to run out of black tonic. He's a mighty fast learner. Got hurt in the tussle. Ain't the first time. Starts to feel his bruises, though. An old repeater falls out of the sky. Ain't a gift from the gods, but it'll have to do. It's a wonder the old saloon's still standing. Used to have the nicest view. Wait, haven't I... Anyway, Rondi's place just brings back memories. It's there, Kid finds his trusty shield. Problem is, clang, shield saves his hide. Windbags start turning up for last call. Them windbags are playing for keeps. Closing time. Too bad for him, only rocks can float these days. The gates are too afraid to budge while security's on watch. One sip of the spirits in that distillery. And the kid'll feel like a new man. The arsenal's where the kid can pick the best tools for the job. Somersaulting like crazy. At last, the skyway's in sight. Whisks him where he needs to go. Ground forms up under his feet as if pointing the way. He don't stop to wonder why. Whole thing takes a little getting used to. Fella got a piece of him, though. Well, he ain't the strongest fella. Then kid finds his trusty shield. But just as he's getting a handle on it, I try to let the kid down gently. The city went quick. No one inside made it. And there it is. Things happen fast in the bastion. Now the kid sees something stranger still. Kid ponders what to build. He clears his throat. He's got something on his mind. I says that ain't nothing important. Only time I ever misled the kid. That ain't nothing important. Only time I ever misled the kid. And now for the monument. It's ready to take the core. Now the bastion can send him even farther into the wild unknown. Kid don't know what's out there waiting for him. The Bastion ought to have a forge he could use. We talk for a spell. This is the Bastion, all right. Except no one else showed up. Kid just needs to stick that core of his into the monument there. Then watch, and just like that, the Bastion comes alive. Starts growing again, growing stronger. Kid's gotta put its power to good use. He's gotta find the cores out there and bring them back. He's gotta find the cores out there and bring them back. With enough of them, the Bastion can fix everything. With enough of them, the Bastion can fix everything. Kid ain't finished here yet, so what happens next? I try to let the kid down gently. This is the Bastion, all right. Except no one else showed up. Now the kid sees something stranger still. His mind races. Did anybody else survive? Sure enough, he finds another. He finds me. Kid does it again. Only fair he decides what we build next. The old world's finished, but the new world's just getting started. The core hums in his pack. The monument's calling for it. There's room to build. Kid's just gotta decide. The windbags used to be alright. Then the calamity took the floor out from under him. We could always see the stars. We just never could reach him. No matter how high we build. Folks voyage across the boundless sea to found Ceylandia. He was good living here for a while. He comes back just like I knew he would. He returns with some of the materials we need. I almost don't believe it when he says he passed the breaker's challenge. He arrives looking rattled, but he's got the core. I still remember the look on his face after that one. The cores, they remember. That's why this place is coming together.
That's why things are gonna be all right. He's got something on his mind. Something's gnawing at him. I tell him what I can. We talk things through. Left him a little something from my fighting days. Makes time to sample spirits from my personal supply. All I tell him is to set that core of his on the monument there. Then watch. The marshals seem like good men, he says. They treated me with dignity. Kid knows something's up when we ain't there to give a warm welcome. See, Zolf and I were just wrapping up a heated discussion. Zolf can barely muster the words. The calamity failed, he says. And with that, Zolf leaves us here, alone. Should have seen those eyes. When Zolf finished reading the journal, I couldn't stop him. Zolf cursed the city. Cursed the bastion. Cursed me. Said he was going home. Zolf banged up the monument pretty bad. So what's the kid do? He keeps going. In search of shards. Like cores, only smaller. As for me, I give up. We're finished. That's it. Few more shards like that, and we'll be back in business. A single shard can breathe new life into this place. They said Queen Anne was just a folktale. Now there's living proof she ain't. I'll take good care of her while you're away. She says, crazy gal, suppose it's true a little song can put things in perspective. Fix that thing right up, didn't we? Made these goings on a little livelier. All that trouble for a single shard. But you know what? It was worth it. It ain't too late to unlock the potential of this place. The shard's got enough juice to spruce up any of these places. That note cuts straight to the heart of things, don't it? Too bad the kid and I can't read Zolf's fancy handwriting. Too bad girl didn't just tell us what it said. Well, we all have our reasons. The shard works like a charm. You can hear the monument's heartbeat again. Ah, uh, come on, give the little tyke a break. Oh, she's cute now. Just you wait. Turn him round and round all you like. Pith's still gonna be ugly. We'll all be better off once the bastion is complete. They said the wild could never be tamed. If only they could see us now. We're all a little short on friends these days. So that's a welcome sight. Just a couple shards left. The quarry's gotta have one, right? Not much left amount Zan nowadays. It's like a cross between a zoo and a prison break. It comes back looking like the inside of a chimney. The monument's getting better. Zolf sure did a number on it, though. We spotted a pecker carrying a shard to Mount Zan. No risk of Colford Cauldron ever erupting again, they used to say. Guess they were wrong. The secret to how we built Ceylandia so tall and proud lies in Burstone Quarry. So we didn't find a core that time, but that ain't about to stop us. The Bastion ain't gonna build itself. Well, not entirely. High time we built something new. First things first. What do we build next? The gods never liked competing for people's affections. Last thing the gods are gonna do is make our lives easier. Sure, I blaspheme against the gods, but I wouldn't recommend it. The arsenal's complete, in case we need protection. Just the occasion to crack open the distillery's private reserve. Ain't saying much, but that's the greatest forge in all the city. Seems the gods recommended this place to all their friends. We need an awful big lost and found under the circumstances. The memorial may be finished, but our part is far from over. Now all we need is one last shard. I revive a kid with a shot of wear whiskey. We find each other as the dust settles. And then I tell him why the Ura came. To get us back. For the calamity. Ceylandia's master plan to wipe the Ura out. But part of that plan backfired, didn't it? If only Zolf knew the whole story, what were we to think? They must have got her, taken her back to her rightful home. The shards can put this disease in remission, but there's only one cure. We need to finish what we started. The Ura swooped down from the west. At least now we know the way. You had to see if everything Zolf wrote to you was true. Once the kid gets that last shard from Zolf, it'll all be over. The Tazzle Terminals. All that's left of the Ura civilization, and the last stop on his little journey. I don't need to see what happened to the Ura. I'm trying to undo it, remember? Sure you didn't drop that twangy thing on purpose, just to see if he go after you. The Ura fell back, no doubt planning the next move, but we knew ours already. There's something we had to do before going after that last shard. That's Trigger Hill, 
where the army's elite became the finest marksmen in the land. Finding gourmet ingredients ain't easy these days, but we'll take what we can get. He wolfs down too much too fast, and it all goes to his head. When the kid wakes up, his world's still in pieces, just the way he left it. Kid maybe shouldn't eat so much so fast. Just can't get enough of that good home cooking, can he? Nothing like a quick nap after a hearty meal. Hungry for more, huh? Well, all right. Slinger Range is where the city's quickest pistoliers put themselves to the test. Boundless Bay used to be a weapons test and dry dock. Ain't never been this dry, though. Over there is Camp Dauncey, where the brushers steal themselves for secret missions. Mansur Observatory. Now there's a sneaky place. Overlooking the Tazzle terminals themselves. Grady Incinerators, where we sent off all our trash to be burned or be eaten by the wild. The shards are getting harder to find. Seems the only thing the calamity saved for Zulf was a smoking pipe. Kid arrives just in time to sample Zia's famous cooking. Part of the rippling walls floated by, so I caught the kid's old knapsack. That gator's a crazy gal, but so is the gal who promised to look after her. Zolf can barely muster the words. The calamity failed, he says. Zolf was so furious. Nothing a girl could have done in the face of rage like that. She can't even read her father's own journal. Can't or won't. So many secrets in there and she can't even read it. Her father's own journal. He's gonna need all his strength where he's going. It's hard to sleep easy these days. What with everything that's happened. Kid tries to get some rest anyway. The kid's gonna be okay. As for that man, who knows? That man, this world's got nothing left for him. Could use a little shut-eye, I suppose. But I wouldn't give her a good night's sleep. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. Zolf loves to watch the stars. Offers to help me plot the skyways for the kid. Good thing that seal's got a bit of the bastion right there inside it. There's a bit of the bastion's power in that seal. Enough to point the way to the cores. Prosper Bluff? Fine view up there. The city to the west and to the east. The wild unknown. Hey, kid. Get up, kid. Come on, that ain't funny. I say get up. That's more like it. Now, set that shard into the monument there. Then we'll talk. Can't believe you brought him back again. Bet you had to do more than say please this time. The Bastion. It's finally finished. First things first, kid. The Bastion's waiting. Now, there's something I want you to see. The Bastion. Ceylandia's safe haven. Once the highest point in the city. Too bad it wasn't finished before the calamity struck. The marshals seem like good men, he says. They treated him with dignity. The Ura swooped down from the east. At least now we know the way. The Bastion's a place of peace, but we can hold our own if we have to. A lot of things need fixing up in this world, and we can start right here. Zoltan's Hollow is the Ura's border blockade. At least it used to be. Zolf can barely muster the words. The calamity failed, he says, but I will not. But there's a way to put it back together. The shards. We're gonna need all of them to nurse the bastion back to health. The city brought the shards to the wilds. Now the kid's gonna bring them back. A scientific journal written in Zolf's native tongue. He learned so much from it. Too much. If only I'd known half the secrets of the calamity were tucked away in that book. I had to work to translate it right away. When Zolf got through reading that journal, he just snapped. Started smashing up the monument till I tried to stop him. Zolf loves Ceylandia like a second home. He's worried sick about his first home, too. The Tazzle Terminals. Far east of here. We all lost loved ones in the Calamity, he says. I don't know how I'm gonna go on without mine. Most of the Ura never got a taste of Ceylandia's fine goods. Unless they were born and raised in the city like this gal. Sure, the world's all gone to pieces farther than the eye can see. But leave it to this gal to point out the amazing view. Girl tried to run away from home one time. But the marshals stopped that, didn't they? Zolf's messenger was one of his people. Wonder just how many of them survived. And what exactly Zolf told him. The note says it plain. Zia, go east to learn the truth about the calamity. And our people. I'll be waiting. Sincerely, Zulf. A shard is like a poor man's core. But beggars can't be choosers. The city tried to use the shards to stake out the wilds. 
So much for that plan. Ain't always much to say. Sometimes a single look says it all. What else is there to say? We ain't much for pleasantries. We talk a little here and there. Keep your chin up, kid, I tell him. I wish him luck, but then feel bad for it. I can barely believe he's come this far. I worry for him. Just don't care to show it. I don't like to keep him waiting. He ain't all that shy. Never could ask for a song. Oh, his manners ain't so bad. He ain't big on small talk. He don't know what to say. He's a little gruff at times. Kid ain't much of a ladies man. He's always tongue tied, ain't he? A reassuring look is all he needs. He's glad you're safe. I can tell. Kid says hello. But Zolf's lost in thought. Zolf's the talkative sort. At least he used to be. Zolf ain't always had much to say. Zolf trails off and asks to be alone. Zolf's gone all quiet again. Zolf and the kid make small talk, but that's it. Zolf gets distant sometimes, like all of us. Picked up traces of other cores while the kid was out. We tracked down a couple more cores near the edge of the city. He's a proper gentleman, that man. His name is Zolf. No hiding, he's an Ura. Folks like him ain't never been a common sight in Ceylandia. He's relieved to see a living face or two. The kid and I introduce ourselves in kind, both to him and to each other, for the first time. He was born in the Tazel Terminals. The Ura sent him on a mission of peace to our city, and he fell in love with it. We find each other as the dust settles. Then I tell him why the Ura came to get us back for the calamity. It was Ceylandia's master plan to wipe the Ura out. But part of that plan backfired, didn't it? If only Zolf knew the whole story. Zolf doesn't touch the thing. Says the god of commotion is no children's toy. They lost everything, didn't they? But they just keep on fighting like that's gonna bring it all back. Queen Anne's reign is over. We even got a crown jewel. Hope Queen Anne don't mind us borrowing from her treasury. For Zolf, Ceylandia was like a second home. He's real worried about his first home, too. Far to the east. He was born in the Tazel Terminals. The Ura sent him on a mission of peace to our city, and he's lived here ever since. Zolf offers to help me plot the skyways for the kid. At least the calamity hasn't touched the stars, he says. I tell him to take care. Don't give in, I say. You ain't in this alone, I tell him. He's gotta watch his back out there. I'll save my thanks for when it's all over. Well, look what we have here. Been meaning to put up some guardrails. Don't look down. Can't be too careful these days. Whoa there. Kid's got a reckless streak in him. It's safe here. Safe as it gets anymore. Most of the Ura never got a taste of Ceylandia's fine goods. Unless they were born and raised in the city like Zia here. Urzendra Gate used to lead down to the terminals. Now it leads up. To the stars. He's looking ready to pick up our search for the cores. Kid can go after the next shard when he's good and ready. Kid's taking every precaution before setting off in search of you-know-who. He's just about ready to make his way to the Tazel Terminals and get this over with. There's a bit of the Bastion's power on that crest. Enough to point the way to the cores. Still no mail. Go figure. At least the plumbing ain't a problem up here. Gotta watch your fingers around that little guy. Seen a lot of strangeness before, but this takes the cake. I ain't ever seen this stuff before, and I ain't seen a lot. Some things just ain't meant for this world, but then the world's full of them. You show me whoever made this, Zolf says, and I'll show you a scientific genius. Go on, open it, she says. The worst that can happen already did, right? Don't get her too excited now. No telling what she'll do. Our little lady turret. She don't make it. Postal service ain't what it used to be. Seen a lot of strange before. But this takes the cake. Seen a lot of strange things. But this takes the cake. Seems Zia's cooking got the best of him. Some things just ain't meant for this world. But who are we to judge? Some things just ain't meant for this world. But then again, what is? Everybody starts small. Then some of us work our way up, I suppose. No use dwelling on an old children's book. The Calamity saved some of my old books. Guess it's got a sense of humor. Never would have pegged the kid as the bookish type. Oh, those books ain't as bad as they look. Required reading, I guess. 
Read and learn, I like to say. Now he lands at the intersection between bad and wrong. Time to get what he came for and get on out. Ought to be a core down one of these twisted streets. But which one? He heads for the biggest dump in town. Scumbag Alley. Up north is where the gas fella foreman used to live. Tending to his flock. He heads for the squirt wards. Won't be no field trip this time. Kid ain't ever seen an elephant squirt before. Hopes he'll never see one again. Some scumbag still feeding off the city's own trash. Even gas fellas need some shut-eye from time to time. They get real cranky when you wake them up. Scumbag can digest just about anything. Except for this. It's quick for slicing and light enough to throw. No sign of the core here. At least the kid got something for his trouble. Core ain't here neither. So he's got to guess again. No core. No surprise. Like the gas fellas are hiding it from him. Odd place to find the likes of Percy the Snitch. Never much cared for that big wide grin of his. They say even the most rambunctious squirts can be tamed. Squirts don't make the best of friends, but they can be useful in a pinch. A blustery old foreman's keeping his fellas in check. Almost like he's showboating for the crowd. Well, no one likes to show off. At least the scumbags kept the place clean. The calamity took everything from him. Some of the stuff lying around is downright dangerous. Keeps telling himself he better watch his step. No why gas fellas all dress alike. Kids wondering the same thing. No core. No surprise. It's like the gas fellas are playing hide and seek. Lucky him. The old forge is still standing. He's got his prize. Just gotta make it to the skyway. He hears the whole place groan, but it's too tough to fall. Them squirts just don't know when to quit. Try as he might. The workman ward gets the better of him. Might as well check the other side streets before leaving this hole. Kid's ready to go, and his ticket out's right where he started. Things get so crazy, kid almost forgets the core. He heads for the squirt steps. Won't be no field trip this time. Kid ain't about to pass out in the middle of the workman ward. He heads for the east side, where windbags used to keep the local forge. They ain't pleased. No coal or alloy left to pay him for their efforts. Somehow that old forge is still standing. Inside the forge, Kid can fine tune those instruments of his. And there he is. The oldest scumbag of them all. Gershel. The calamity ain't done much for Gershel's sunny disposition. They always said old Gershel wouldn't go without a fight. Kid cuts up Gershel like a vine apple. Old scumbag didn't feel a thing. Shame old Gershel can't float like when he was a young fella. The rest of the path is gone for good. And his city crest won't bring it back. And now there's a new marshal in town. In better days, the ship and trade house was sealed tighter than the skin on a squirt. They tied it up at the trade house when they heard the kid was coming back. Of all the plans to survive the calamity, it had to be stab weeds. Places teeming with them. Blasted things hurt like a broken heart. If there's a core, he figures it ought to be deeper down. And there it is. But it's locked down tight in an alloy cage. No breaking a cage like that. But the kid tries anyway. Gotta find a way to spring it open. He throws a switch. Now what could possibly go wrong? Quite a bit. As it turns out, the cage starts lifting from the core ever so slow. All kid can do is wait. Shipments start falling in. Squirts get real territorial around the core. Scumbags don't take kindly to interlopers. It's a troublesome scene to be sure. Not every squirt's born bad. Some spring to the kid's defense. Even some gas fellas take his corner. Heard he pop that mean old foreman. Then a shipment of free samples shows up. Finally, the core's within reach. He's got it. Just gotta get to the nearest barge. Judging by the moving of the cage, it's gonna take a little while. At this rate, maybe five more minutes. Maybe thirty. Hard to tell. One thing's for sure, that cage is awful heavy. A few moments left, and the core goes free. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Give or take a few seconds. And done. Ain't no easy way out of this mess. It all proves more than the kid can handle. It ain't all bad, as the kid finds some spices from the motherland. Tax-free. Core's locked down tight in that alloy cage. Ceylandia held treasures from around the world, but Kid needs just one. 
In better days, the melting pot was sealed tighter than the skin on the squirt. They tied it up at the melting pot when they heard the kid was coming back. He's hurting, but he's got to hold out just a little longer. He cuts down every stab weed like there's going to be a prize for it. Core's stuck inside one of those fancy cages. Couples used to walk the sundown path. Kid ain't here for pleasure, though. Kid's been down the path enough times that it's feeling real familiar. Somebody gets to the core before the kid. Floor starts giving way under the lightest step. A single panic squirt could bring the whole place down. So could a reckless kid, for that matter. Stray valuables are lying everywhere. Kid thinks twice about risking his hide for him, though. Skyway has linked the path together. Steering mid-air takes practice. Gotta lean back and bend the knees. Gotta use the arms to keep balance. Some say not to look down, but you gotta do it. Not everybody learns things the right way. Well, the path ain't exactly open to visitors no more. Youngsters used to sneak inside past dark, forcing some precautions. See, the path was intended for leisurely strolling and such. Not so much for noise and tomfoolery. Who else could have taken the core? Who else could have survived the calamity? Well, ain't no survivor stole the thing. Scumbag ate it by mistake. Kid takes it into his care and hurries on home. Someone's dumped the hottest gal from security right there on the path. She finds herself a new partner. All she needs is a little care and patience. More trouble huddled at the exit. When the dust begins to settle, Kid makes a break for it. Sure, he's got the core, but it ain't the only thing he's been looking for. Quick and careful is the only way to go. The path claims another. Finds a spyglass, like the ones they'd use to search the stars. Someone's dumped the hottest gal from the arsenal right there on the path. He puts up quite an effort, but it's sundown for the kid. But then, security's all fired up. Fragments of the old world rain from the sky. No, they used to ship live munitions down the path. Find time to find them. He's wise to toss those things plenty far away. One of his grenades lands a little too close to home. He gets the wind knocked right out of him. Sky bridges link the path together. Tough break. Unlike the kid, that core ain't coming back. In all his toil, Kid keeps coming back to an overwhelming question. One of them bridges whips the kid along. Air travel always was an iffy proposition. But calamity changed everything. Even where the wind blows. Well, if we mastered the winds in the old days, we can do it again. But the question is, the dead welcome him with open arms. Now here's what really happened in the hanging gardens. The calamity took everybody after all. Kid sees a plain, frozen faces all around. He don't much care to see him. Not like this. The dead ain't got nothing left to regret. These folks never saw the calamity coming. But someone did. Someone close. Someone who ain't like Mr. Beckley and his kindly wife. They never saw what it was like beyond the walls. It was someone like him. Kid sees him there agape in the flesh. It's a snag or two trying to get to him. He ain't about to stop. No matter what, he ain't about to slow down. He's got so many questions, after all. Just ain't got time for answers. The Tundra Brothers didn't make it. Nor did the Bird Boy didn't make it. The Jawsons, they didn't make it. Grady Sr., Grady Jr., they didn't make it. But him, he survived. The Corps survived as well. Kid does what he has to do. And then, what do you say to a man who's seen too much? Kid hasn't a clue. But he says this. Just think, without that man, we wouldn't be here right now, would we? There's more than enough despair here already. Kid can't take the sight of this place no more. Kid finds a picture book of lands he had never seen before. Kid finds proof enough that man ain't from around here. Place is like a bad dream. He's a proper gentleman, that man. He's Zulf of the Ura, traveling anthropologist, and he's pleased to make our acquaintance. We introduce ourselves in kind, both to him and to each other, for the first time. He was born in the Tazel Terminals, a true blue or a diplomat living in our city. When Zolf sees what happens with the Corps, he takes it as a sign from the gods. We fought the Ura decades ago, but that was then. Things are different between us now. With Zolf's help, we plot the way to the next closest Corps, the dead. The dead ain't gotta worry about this mess. Something so familiar about that man. Can't do nothing to get his attention. We have to go. 
Please, there's only one way into Cinderbrick Fort. The hard way. The fort's still standing there, waiting for the kid. Mocking him. Sure, the city marshals may be gone, but now the fort's crawling with windbags. Least the marshals left the kid a parting gift. Something the windbags just can't handle. Something that'll punch clean through their greasy hides. You'd think a grown-up windbag would know better. Well, windbags young and old keep fighting for the fort. They never learn to back down. That's why they used to do such good work. So many of those sorry things hold up inside that old fort. Could have been minding the business underground like in the old days. The calamity drove the windbags topside. A lot of them wound up here in this very fort. Cinderbrick gave them enough heat and metal to munch on for a while. Well, the fort ain't theirs by right. Can't blame them for wanting it, though. They'll do anything for it. They even turned the fort's own mortars on the kid. Windbags ain't much different from normal folks. All they want's a warm place to stay and a decent meal. The calamity was mercy for normal folks. The windbags ain't so lucky. They've been left to freeze or starve or face the kid. Kid used to dream of getting a marshal's badge, but not like this. As for the windbags, they trap the kid in the middle of the fort's parade grounds. Then they bring out Glutus and Glandon and all their scumbag uncles. They got something to gain and only their sorry hides to lose. Kid takes down Glutus. Or maybe it was Glandon. The other big fella soon joins his brother, wherever they are now. The uncles go out with a whimper. Kid succeeds where the calamity failed. It's for the best. It's a straight shot to the skyway. But the fort's mortars complicate things. Kid sure is lucky those mortars ain't used to shooting into the fort. The Skyway's a welcome sight after all that. And now ain't nothing left for nobody down at Cinderbrick Fort. So many stairs, somebody's sure to trip. The windbags put the kid on notice. And that's why Cinderbrick's got such a bad reputation. Kid shows up just as Zolf's telling me about his own journey to the city. Kid's surprised when I tell him there's only one core left. I shouldn't have believed it either. Even since the Ura surrendered to us, the marshals kept a wary eye on him. Trip mines like the kids were made right there in that fort. Good thing Kid brought a stash of hand grenades along. Kid's got a squirt lure at the ready in case things turn sour. Kid's been saving his best tricks for when he needs them most. Kid takes the first flight of stairs with barely a scratch. Kid takes a beating around the first flight of stairs. Not a scratch on him as he presses on the higher ground. He took a few licks, but he keeps on going. Kid can't hardly tell up from down after a while. Splat. One of those things breaks the kid's fall. Wham. Kid's ready for the windbags this time. Kid has no trouble finding the fort's not-so-hidden alcoves. Kid retraces his footsteps to find one of the fort's hidden alcoves. Kid's blasting everything in sight with that newfangled musket. Kid ain't making much use of his newfangled musket. No use waiting round for security to show up. Kid ain't afraid of getting burned. Good thing the windbags don't know Kid's fresh out of health tonics. Kid blasts one clean off a ledge. That's Cinderbrick Fort, where the marshals used to watch over the city. Kid took a beating back there, but he's up for more pain. Zolf's travels ain't much compared to what the kids had to go through for all this. Times like this, kids glad he packed trip mines. We got a foundation. Just need plans for something new to build. Windbags can't use the marshal's supplies, but the kid sure can. He stashes the marshal's prize. Goes back to something more his style. Kid's stash of grenades is their form if things get even worse. Security's playing gone haywire. Windbags gummed up the works. The windbags finally get the message. No use praying to the gods these days. No time for it either. The less said about the gods, the better. Kid says a little prayer anyway. Couldn't hurt, right? Pith Orchard. Place is a dead end in more ways than one. Folks used to make pilgrimage here to pay their respects to Pith, the bull. Well, the gods are long gone now. And the Orchard core, it's long gone too. Seems Pith ain't much of a watchdog. Well, no use turning back just yet. Pith stood for order and for commotion as well. In time, though... The bull stopped being a symbol and started being decoration. He couldn't even save his loyal subjects. The gods don't care about trinkets, but the kid ain't no god. Piff makes a decent scarecrow at least. Kid gives that old bull what's coming to him. Kid knows better than to mess with those horns. Then Piff lights up like a rodeo. 
Ain't easy punching through his hide. Kid breaks him to bits. Must have been guarding that shrine. Kid can tempt fate all he wants in there. So what'll it be? Invoke the gods? Or tell him off? Kid decides to press his luck. Kid don't need favors from the likes of Pith. On second thought, maybe he does. Well, if the gods are alive, they must be plenty sore. Kid ain't never seen windbags that quick. Maybe old Pith put a scare in him. Kid passes Pith's trial, and he's richer for it. Popping windbags is hard enough. No need to get the gods involved. Things might have gone worse if Kid tampered with that shrine. The gods ain't gonna catch you if you fall. Kid ain't about to sacrifice himself for the likes of Pith. If the gods ain't dead, then they ought to be. Kid ain't found the core, but at least he found Zolf's precious shrine. Now we can build a shrine of our own. Though I got some alternatives in mind. The Ura feared the gods. We turned them into toys, put their faces on our walls. Zolf doesn't touch the thing. The god of commotion is no children's toy. Popping windbags is hard enough. The gods can make it even harder. Things might have gone worse if Kid kept tampering with that shrine. The gods, they're all undone. He can't just leave without checking out that shrine, right? Pith stood for something once. Something real. The Langston River flowed free and wild till the calamity drank it all up. Well, the river ain't coming back just by talking about it. Maybe all that water just grew wings and flew off. Riverbanks swarming with windbags. They're so bent on finding the core they hardly notice the kid. Lucky for him, a certain famous ferry barge is still afloat. Weeping Nelly. She sends some squirts crying home as she leaves port. Maybe Nelly knows the way to the core. Maybe she can slip right past all the clamor on the coast. Or maybe not. A security skiff pulls up portside. Nellie's just another windbag to those guns. It's no secret where she's headed after all. Just then, the windbags notice who she's sailing with. They're plenty sore about what happened at Cinderbrick. They try to cut her off. They try to slow her down. They try to knock her out. Well, weeping Nellie tries harder. Try as she might, though. She hits a snag. Kids gotta help her get untangled. Favors for favors. At least she picked a good spot for a break. Cause the core's right there. Then the kid hears an unusual sound. Like a hundred flapping wings. Peckers. They've been watching his every move. Must have thought the windbags would clear a path for him. They had their own eyes on the core. But why? Well, kid ain't got time to think it over just yet. He finds weeping Nelly raring to go. Turns out she's got a special surprise for when the waters get rough. She's gonna need a little help with all them peckers. Crafty things think they're king of the roost now. Rest of us only wish we could fly in times like these. Security skiffs keep on coming starboard side. Don't seem to care what they shoot, long as they hit something. The windbags get an even better idea. They aim to smash weeping Nelly to splinters. They don't know the kid's just trying to help. Or maybe they don't care. Well, it all proves too much for poor Nelly. She's just gotta make one last stop. With her last breath, Nelly gets the kid to solid ground. Solid ground, swarming with peckers. They want that core real bad. Might be they want it just as bad as a kid. Kid shoes them off, knowing they'll be back. Now, listen close. You should remember this next part. Seems a calamity ain't hurt the peckers' appetites. The river ain't never been safe for swimming. He takes a hard hit, but he ain't finished. The river's such an overwhelming place. Kid almost falls again. Know how many times Kid nearly fell off the barge back there? Not even once. Just once. A good couple of times. Three times. Four times. Five times. About six times. About seven times. Eight whole times. Nine whole times. Ten times. Maybe even more. Something like 15 times. I sure don't. Lost count around the 20th time. Good having hopscotch at times like these. He sure could have used a drink of hopscotch. Kid boards one of them skiffs like some kind of Ceylondian privateer. That's the Langston River. Used to cut all the way to the wild. Think it was bad then. Solid ground and picker country. They're pretty steamed about what happened at Cinderbrick. Why go to Prosper Bluff? Why'd you go to Prosper Bluff? Hard to forget Prosper Bluff, ain't it? Used to take an enterprising man or a plain old fool to venture out that far. The city was the most beautiful place in the world. We all knew that. But on the other hand, some folks just yearn to see the things they're told they can't. And that's why you go to Prosper Bluff. 
ain't it? The other kid hears something he ain't heard in a long while. How's it go again? Yeah, that's the one. Well, no point explaining what happens next, right? Suffice it to say, kid ain't coming home empty-handed. And besides, it's like the song goes. They'll be here before too long. Sorry to interrupt. Kid near dug his own hole there on the bluff. We darn near celebrated when the kid got back, didn't we? Zolf never thought he'd see a fellow her again. I'm from the city, she says. My name is Zia. We become fast friends. Calamity has that effect on people. But there was more to be done. There was one last core to find. This is all I have to remember my father, she says. And I can't even read it. Zolf's eyes go wide. It's a scientific journal in traditional Ur script. Pours over the thing night after night. We're down to one last core. Why should anyone care about some blasted book? We track the final core beyond the city to the wilds. That's the one. Timeless. That's the one. Timeless classic. The wild unknown. Place can eat a man alive. In time, we charted the wild unknown. But we kept the name. Place is so raw, even the calamity couldn't cook it. Not all of it. Gotta keep a sure foot out there. The wilds drag him down. So many folks lost forever in the wilds. Savage things lurking at every turn. Peckers got the core like they're building a bastion of their own. Getting that core was one thing. Getting out's gonna be another. The calamity must have scrambled their eggs. Inside those shells, they're soft as sin. Kid keeps looking for a way out of this hole. Finally, a skyway. Kid takes a last look around. Cause he ain't coming back. Thanks to the kid, at least Jawson's ghost won't be haunting us no more. The final core's what matters, but too bad kid never found old Jawson's resting place. Wild green vine apples about the only good thing out here. Don't ever turn your back on a pin cushion. Know what's better than having a slinger pistol in a fight? Having two. Jawson's boys left all kinds of stuff out here. Leave it to the kid to make time for stomping swamp weeds. He's been gone a while, so we're worried kid'll end up like old Jawson. Kid's faster than a slinger with those guns. Pin cushions ain't the worst of it either. The welcoming committee scrambles to attention. Didn't expect the kid so soon. They shouldn't have let their guard down. He digs his way out of the clearing, but the wilds won't let him go without a fight. Wallflowers survived the calamity. It toughened him up. Same goes for the kid. Slinger Jawson's old outpost is all that's left of him. Kid sticks to his old standbys. Best take it real slow when pincushions are afoot. Pincushions come in several flavors. All oh, disgusting. A handful of windbag shipments made it out this far. Kid's seen the last of them. Kid's roused up half the wilds by now. By now, kid's got more needles in him than a stab weed. The core's right there, itching to come home. Good thing pin cushions can't see where they're shooting. Kid learns the hard way not to touch those things. Pow. Gives a wallflower a taste of its own medicine. All too easy to lose one's way out in the wilds. Then Kid gets the feeling he's being watched. Not by me. By a lunkhead. And lunkheads ain't fond of two-legged animals. Hit him anywhere but the hindquarters and he only make him mad. The calamity must have scrambled their eggs. That lunkhead flattens him out. Sees a smooth black stone coughed up by the calamity. Be seeing plenty more. Hardly any signs of the old Jawson camp. The Wilds already reclaimed this place. He's anxious to get back. After all, he's got the final core. His journey's over, right? Well, no. It ain't. Not by a long shot. Say what you will about Zolf, but he's a man of his word. Zolf was such a cordial man when we first met. His countrymen don't much care for pleasantries, though. Too bad for that. The Ura. Some of them survived. Escaped the calamity down in their tunnels. Zolf showed them the way here. And here they came. To take revenge. To make matters worse, seems the Ura took the girl. They got inside the bastion and shut the door. Kids gotta go in through the back. I should have told them sooner. About all this. See, the Bastion's no mere safe haven. Big surprise, right? The place ain't no fortress, but it has ways of protecting itself. I was seeing to that. Unfortunately, they broke in. And they started digging their holes. Something wrong sprung out of those holes. 
and it's eaten away at this place. We tried to stop him, but we needed help. I couldn't stop him alone. I ain't a kid no more. Whole thing is like a bad dream. Our little squirt. He don't make it. Our ankle gator hatchling. She don't make it. Our refurbished mechanical bull. It don't make it. Our baby pecker. He don't make it. Kids hurting bad. And no helps in sight. Somehow. Some way. He sends those who are a packing. Problem is. It didn't matter. Zolf's plan worked. Well, it's all more than anyone could handle. After that. The Ura. They left. They'd done what they aimed to do. Zolf's plan worked. No way out of this. Not without a fight. The Ura think they got him. They're wrong. Thank goodness for Hardy Punch. Should have seen this coming. Felt it in my bones. Stay out in the wilds long enough. It messes with your head. Slinger Jawson gave his life to the wilds. So we named a bog after him. You'll get lost in that bog, I told the kid and I won't be able to guide you back. This place is intoxicating. Thought we'd lost him, but it finally comes to. The shard ain't lost either, not anymore. Now to find a ticket out of this hole. Bootlickers dig their nasty thorns into his heels. Disgusting things. Ever heard of a lung blossom? It's bigger than the stories say. The breath on that thing. Like a scumbag sprung a leak. They say one whiff of lung blossom can make you lose your mind. Well, the kid prunes it down to size somehow. Mother only knows what happened in the bog. Kid never much cared to speak of it. Hard to get a sure footing in the bog. Kid ain't about to be playing food just yet. The bog might have swallowed him whole. Sad to say the gift of song don't always help. Best not to stick around too long in a place like this. Kid doubles back just in case he missed something. Why, it's a little souvenir to remember that bog. After Zolf's little episode, Kid sets off in search of shards. First stop, Jawson Bog. Oh, near lost my train of thought just thinking about that place. Well, I let him go. What else could I do? What could any of us do? Zolf put us in a real bind. Hurt the bastion bad. But the shards can make it better. They're like smaller doses of the core's medicine. Shame the only place to fill that prescription is out here in the wilds. Don't know where he's gone. Might be gone for good for all I know. Wherever he is. Somewhere I've never been. Somewhere I never want to go. The dead welcome him with open arms. Kid pops him good. Better survivor. No, ma'am. It's a lonesome ghost of a gas fella. What do you say to a kid who's seen too much? I'm Zolf of the Ura. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Now the kid sees something stranger still. Did anybody else survive? Sure enough, he finds peckers, lunkheads, wallflowers, pincushions, vine apples, swamp weeds. Ankle gators. Now the bastion can send him even farther into the wild unknown. This wretched place. I will send it crashing to the ground. Kid sets foot inside one of Ceylandia's famous watering holes. He has the nerve to flash the shield he stole. He's a petty thief. The security's just gonna have to straighten him out. Kid succeeds where the calamity failed. Would you look at what he did to poor old Rondi the bartender? The sole regret is the last man standing. Proper story is supposed to start at the beginning. It's so simple with this one. Now here's a kid whose whole world's alright. Snoozing there on a rock in the sky. He wakes up. I'm just fooling. He sees what's left of the rippling walls. Years of work undone in an instant. He sees what's left of Pith, the bull. The gods, they're all undone. He sees what's left of his lifelong friend. His friend, he's come undone too. He sees what's left undone. Until next time, kid can't fall. 
No matter how hard he tries, there's no way out. There is no way out. Many a tale folks used to scare their children straight originated here. All kinds of beasts what don't know up from down still lurking about. These beasts, they don't like company. Only the city's brushers knew their way round the lagoon. They moved quick and quiet, and they struck hard. Can't fight Queen Anne without the proper tools. Gotta draw her out, then hit her hard. Rest in peace, Queen Anne. That was for the brushers. Ankle gators used to roam the wilds and they nested at Rothus Lagoon. Rothus Lagoon, that ain't the sort of place you'd want to go by choice. Even the brushers learned to fear this place. They used to think that ankle gators were extinct. Well, they ain't. One of them's been living in the tall grass. They called her Queen Anne. The lagoon's got plenty of other dangers, of course. Turns out Queen Anne got a hold of a shard. Ankle gators love shiny things. Know what smells worse than an ankle gator's breath? A stink weed. Ain't time for pecker hunting, but the kid can't resist. The brushers use their pikes to keep their distance around here. Now the kid can do the same. Sharp sticks make Queen Anne nervous, so she backs off a bit. Most of those peckers are smart enough to stay out of Queen Anne's way. Kid's got a mean throwing arm. Those pin cushions been living off the ankle gator scraps. Queen Anne can't fit down some of these narrow paths. Queenie leads the kid into some kind of twisted trap. Cause the collapse with all her digging. One bad step in that tall grass and he's Queen Anne's lunch. He holds his ground. Seems the queen's running out of options. He takes off after her, fast as he can. Still no sign of the shard. The closer you get to an ankle gator's lair, the thicker the tall grass grows. Kid's gotta make a run for it. That old gator's right on his tail. Those leaping lunkheads don't like Queen Anne any better than the kid. They make a tasty snack. Seems even stinkweeds know to stay away from the queen. Queenie must have scared a bunch of peckers out of hiding. Ankle gators don't much care for their young. That's why there ain't many around. Wanna know how to find an ankle gator lair? You use a kid as bait. Now she's coming for him. She's got nowhere else to go. They say if you run across an ankle gator, you better keep running. She's starting to get annoyed. And now he's made her mad. The shard's sitting in plain view. He's got it. And now to finish her off. He's got it. And he's home free. Kid's done what needed to be done. After all that, kid lets the ankle gator go. They say you can't hurt an ankle gator unless it's raining. And it ain't raining. Can't get hasty in a place like this. That's ankle gator country for you. Want to get eaten by an ankle gator? You know where to go. Well, the brusher's way ain't really his style. Bad idea to walk in gator grass. Queen's got one mean bite. Best not to feed the local wildlife. Know how Ceylandia became the richest city in the world? Two words. Few places steeped in history and sweat so much as this. Point Lemaine. If the wilds could ever be tamed, it was gonna happen right here. But now, the greatest outpost past the city line is nothing but a freak show. The army's triggers once had the place on lockdown. Kid might as well pick up where they left off. Blam, just like my fighting days. Gun like that can even put the wilds in check. Point Lemaine seemed better days for sure, but it ain't done. Whole place shudders in a fit. The grand rail of Point Lemaine. Not only is it still there, it still works. Kid don't want to miss this train. Of course, it's no longer shipping hides and alloys and spices, but it can give the kid a lift. Just as long as he can stay clear of the trouble on the tracks. The grand rail's all grown over with things the calamity chewed up and spat out. Things eager to take back their turf. Kid don't let so much as one of those things slip by. Kid lets a few of them slip by. Lunkheads settled in like they own the place. Lunkheads ain't known for their grace. Takes fancy footwork on the rail, what with wallflowers coughing fungus everywhere. Only one way to cure a cough like that. Place used to be closed off, but now it's split open like a rotten vineapple. Course the Grand Rail seen much more fighting in bygone times. Near on 50 years ago, first shots fired in the Ura Ceylandian War. It was right here that Zolf's Ura forefathers decided to mix it up. Okay, so maybe we didn't get their sign-off on the whole Grand Rail thing. That was bad. The rail must have shook the Ura to the bone down in those dens of theirs. 
Well, the rail won't last much longer now that the kid took the shard. It's still got one good run in store for him, though. All the rotten wood there on the rails turned it into swamp weed central. Ever tried dancing side to side while holding your breath? While shooting a genuine registered army carbine? While choking on swamp weed? While peckers trying to prick you in the eye? Well, let me tell you, it ain't fun. But then, at last, it's the end of the line. Should have seen him tiptoe around those swamp weeds in his way. He'll be picking swamp weed out of those boots for days. Turns out he's got company up at the rail station waiting for him. Not just another wallflower or pincushion, mind you. At first he thinks it's Zulf. Turns out he's wrong. This is for you, says the man. Then wham. When the kid comes to, the man's long gone. But something else is there. The only words the kid recognizes on that parchment are for Zia. Well, what's a kid to do? He took the shard, he took the hit, and he took that note. Not much wiggle room up there near the rail. Ceylandia had lost many good men on the rail. Imagine if Kid never got the message there at Point Lemaine. The Ura Ceylandian War, 50 years ago, doomed to happen again. Not everything blew up in the calamity. Why Colford Cauldron here blew up way ahead of its time. One thing's worse than the heat in Colford Cauldron. The smell. Like rotten eggs. Ain't gonna be easy getting a shard from a place like that. The cauldron boiled over some 300 years ago. They say it filled the skies with ash and the lakes with molten rock. If you wanted to survive something like that, you had to learn to adapt. So in a way, the beasts of the wilds, they're all survivors too. It takes a certain stubborn pride to keep on living in a place like this. As for us... We learned an awful lot from Colford Cauldron. That learning led to some interesting inventions. The raw power of the world fell right into our hands. Can't fault our people for their natural curiosity now, can you? Sure, we dusted off a good many secrets out here, but we discovered other things we're better off not knowing. The unforgiving scent of sulfurous dirt, the taste of air so hot it sticks to your lungs. All sorts of awful things crawling underfoot. You can cook those things, but you can't eat them. We kept on sifting through the cauldron's secrets anyway. The more ash we swept aside, the more life we found. Places inhospitable as they come, but still we pressed on. After all, when we looked down inside Colford Cauldron, looked down through all the smoke and flames, we saw in there the heart of the world. The heart now laid bare by the calamity. We had to have it. As for the kid, he just has to get that shard out of there. Too bad taking that thing woke up every last stink eye from here to Jawson Bog. Kid's thinking he's got to trek all the way back around the cauldron. Luckily, the cauldron cooked up a little shortcut for him. Sure, it ain't the most convenient path. Biggest stink eye he's ever seen's waiting for him on the other side. Pops open on him like a pimple on a school day. Well, it ain't polite to stare. And where there's one stink eye, there's always more. The cauldron's tenants all gather up to bid the kid a fond farewell. Kid don't shed any tears for him, though. With a good spyglass, you can still see the cauldron from the city. But all the fires died out. There's nothing left of it. Best to keep out of the cauldron. It's awful hot in there. The cauldron cooked him through. Never thought we'd find so much life in all that ash. Playing with the cauldron's fires became an addiction. Can't rightly call Mount Zan the mountain anymore. The beasts of the wild came down from the mountains. There's no more mountains now. There's no place left for the beasts of the wild to go. So they figure they'll hold out right here on a slab of mountain the calamity forgot. Those beasts been hoarding all the valuables they could find. The creatures of the wild. They've been building a bastion of their own. They've rounded up their survivors, just like we have. They've been searching for cores and shards, just like we have. Maybe they've thought about turning back, just like we have. They even dragged their children into this. Without a doubt, the situation stinks. Best thing we can do for those beasts right now is put them down quick and clean. Steady. Aim. Fire. And boom. Look at it this way. It's either them or us. But if we win, they win too. Our bastion is everybody's gain, not just our own. Takes a lot of convincing, and our mortars have to do the talking.
We just really need their shard. Kid got it fair and square. Suppose he's free to leave now. He don't need to keep tangling with all those things. There's only one kind of mercy left these days. He's done what's best for him, don't you worry. Don't you worry. That's the way. It's a delicate situation. The beasts of Mount Zan go all out. Mount Zan is all the wilds have left. What the city left behind, those beasts took for themselves. We only found their little lair because they found themselves a little shard. Good thing for those beasts the calamity saved leftovers. Those beasts been hard at work fixing up the place. But they ain't yet prepared for any company. Besides... We have to take back what's ours, even if the beasts of the wilds won't like it. But if we win, they win too. Our bastion is everybody's gain, not just ours. Unfortunately, there's no explaining that to a simple beast. Imagine everything you'd need to build a city like Ceylandia. Just takes three things to build the greatest city in the world. It takes hard work and planning. And it also takes Burstone Quarry. The Ura tunnels beneath the quarry must have softened the blow from the calamity. Same goes for its natives. Rattletails. Why would the Ura put up with those pests? Rattletails ain't the worst of it either. But more about that in a little bit. We bought the whole place from the Ura on the cheap. It was a steal. The quarry came with a lifetime supply of windbags. Windbags smaller than the naked eye can see are nesting in those rocks. But there was even more to it than that. Not only are these rocks a source of life, we found that the oldest ones remember things. They're recording everything, all the time, taking it all in. No wonder all those beasts were drawn to the quarry. The rocks were calling them. Keeping the quarry free from pests turned out to be a problem. Rattletails kept tunneling in to snack on windbags. Windbags tended to the rocks, so we had to keep the rattletails at bay. Without those windbags, the quarry might not have its special qualities. Even stink eyes started taking root in here. Now why would the Ura sell off such a fascinating place? The Ura always were a superstitious lot. Might be the gods told them the quarry's bad news. On top of that, you know the Ura hated anything above ground. Might be the quarry just got too much sunshine for their liking. In any case, it's fair to say the quarry was a godsend. Those rocks... All polished to a mirror sheen. The largest ones, you know as cores. A single core could keep the lights on in an entire city district. The smaller ones, we call them shards. A shard's got a fraction of a core's power, enough to fuel a voyage to the motherland. Well, now the quarry's all dried up. These rocks are much too young to be a use. Remember how I said rattletails ain't the worst thing in the quarry? That honor goes to a beast we took to Colin. Sir Lunky. Massive things stomp many of our boys. We just couldn't get rid of him. The only thing harder than the rocks in Burstone Quarry is Sir Lunky's head. His big fat rump's plenty tough too. But so is a kid. We never could get stubborn old Lunky to leave the quarry alone. Then the kid hears a voice calling from down the hall. Are you alright? It says. It's him. I've come to warn you. He says. The Bastion is under siege. Let it fall. You should not go back. Kid hears him, but he ain't about to be deterred. If that's the way it is, he says, then I won't stop you. Because my countrymen will. The quarry ain't exactly up to safety standards no more. Rattletails fill the place with holes. Can't be too careful in there. Hard times in the quarry these days. Those rocks won't soon forget this. The quarry's secrets ain't exactly obvious. The next part's hard to talk about. No matter how many times I try. One last shard. It's all we need to put this mess behind us. The calamity can be undone. But it's important to understand why it happened. And mother, what a mess it is. A mess like that could have only been made by hand. Zolf said the calamity failed. And he's right. The Ura stand as living proof of that. It was never meant to happen this way. Never should happen at all. At the heart of the calamity was a simple idea. We never wanted to go to war again. Wanted to rule it out. We put a lot of folks against that problem. Scientists, soldiers, spies, even me. We sought solutions far beyond the city. We traveled near as far as the kids going right now. Most of our efforts didn't bear fruit. Then there was a breakthrough, but it didn't come from one of our people. 
It came from an era, a brilliant young scientist named Ven. Ven worked for the Mansers, the sharpest knives in the city's drawer. They worked him hard. Ven knew everything about the Ura after all. With his help, the Mansers devised a way to seal the Ura tunnels shut in a flash. Just like that, every last Ura living in the Tazzle terminals will be gone. But Ven didn't like being manipulated. He had plans of his own. They say he tried to send an informant to the Tazzle terminals to expose the plot. Unfortunately, he failed. So the Mansers worked him even harder. He was on his last legs. Tensions between our people and the Ura rose to a boil after Vent's escape attempt. Well, like I said, we didn't want another war. Vent had one last trick up his sleeve, and it was cold. He sabotaged the Mansers' little science project, set it to blow up in their faces. Imagine how Vent must have felt when they finally made him pull that trigger. But remember... The Bastion can fix everything. We just need that shard. Too bad the Ura ain't exactly been willing to collaborate on that front. For now, Kid had little choice but to pick up where the Calamity left off. First things first, though. There's someone we figure needed rescuing. Zia, we're lucky to be alive. We can't turn back now. We have to do this. It's strange. Feels like I told this part a thousand times. This discovery was never to be used, they said, except as a last resort. The Mansers insisted that the Ura were preparing to attack. Mother only knows if they were right. They knew what they had to do, and they made Ven do it. Well, now it's personal, ain't it? When the Ura attacked, we took it hard, and now it's personal for him. And it's personal for me. The Hura's border blockade ain't much to speak of, but it's got a nice view. He finds his moment to strike. He gets straight down to business. They never saw him coming. He gets his hands on the care package I sent him. It's a little something I've been fixing up in my spare time. The power of the Calamity. Right in his hands. The Calamity did something wrong to some of them rocks. The Hura found a way to keep the Calamity from spreading through Zoltan's Hollow. Kid has to put a damper on their plans. They got their own security and everything. Pretty fancy, even. Still, they ain't used to having visitors around. They've got these conductors that are all what's keeping the place together. Break enough of those things and the Calamity rocks slink back into the ground. Those rocks are like tumors. The same kind the Ura planted in the Bastion. Well, the Ura must be in a panic right about now. They even sick their little rattletail pets on the kid. Those rodents are just a bump in the road. Kid's picking the whole place apart, piece by piece. By now, every Ura from here to the terminals must know he's in town. They organize a welcoming committee. Kid returns their greeting tenfold. Most of the Ura's conductors are squared away in the middle of the hollow. They're easy targets. Those Calamity Rocks must be eating that place apart from the inside. The Ura keep hanging on to their barricade. After all, their homeland's not much farther. Some of them are downright bewildered by what's happening. Maybe they know they've lost this. Lost to a kid. They underestimated us. Had us pegged all wrong. Yes, our people caused the Calamity. But here we are trying to fix it. That makes us different from our people now, don't it? Shame the opportunity for civilized discourse is over. Did the Ura really think we'd just turn around and walk away? Suppose old Zolf should have got to know us better. Maybe I should have trusted him. Told him everything I knew. Zolf, the Ura, they have every reason to be angry. Beyond angry. But when this is all over, it'll all be water under the bridge. As the hour grows desperate, the Ura bring out their big guns. Too bad for them. Our guns are bigger still. There's nothing standing in the way of his prize no more. He sees the Tazzle terminals loom large on the horizon. Now the kid sees something stranger still. His mind races. Did she survive? She must have survived. And sure enough, he finds you. And Zia, you weren't kidnapped now, were you? No, ma'am. You just had to see what really happened to the Ura. To your own people. All those dreams snuffed out in the calamity. We'll bring him back. It's not the time to get reckless. The Ura ain't pulling their punches. He promised he'd come back. Kid's done using the calamity's power for now. But the Ura ain't finished. There's nothing standing in his way no more. Way out there on the edge of the world. 
That's where he finally finds you. But it ain't like Prosper Bluff this time. Ain't nothing for this gal to sing about now. Zia, you weren't kidnapped. No, ma'am. You just had to see what happened to the Ura. To your own people. I can't hear him at all anymore. He's too far away. No telling where the kid is now. But he'll be alright. Just needs to get that shard from Zolf and come on home. The calamity hit the Tazel terminals hardest of all. No chance anything survived. You know why Zolf went back there. The place was his home. All his old friends and family were there, taken by the calamity. Zolf must be there all alone, just waiting, waiting for his plan to send the bastion crashing down. You know what's funny? Well, Zolf's waiting, we're waiting. All we can do is sit and talk. All of us are waiting for a kid. Look around. There's not much left to do here in the bastion, I'm afraid. So why not tell each other stories to pass the time, right? But Zia, there's another reason I've been telling you all this. There's something I want you to understand. So listen close. When the kid brings back that shard, the bastion will be complete. This disease the era planted here will go away. What happens to Zulf will no longer matter. Ceylandia will be whole again. Everything will be back to normal. Everyone will be alright. Problem is, we'll all be gone. Come on, pay attention. Oh, kid's got it under control. He'll make it. You'll see. The Tazzle Terminals. Zolf's biding his time somewhere in there, waiting for the Bastion to fall. Got his lifelong friend to keep him company. Oh, we're not gonna die. It's more like, when we're finished, everything will change. All of this will just stop. Things will go back to the way they used to be. That's the power of the Bastion. This whole place is a living record of the times before the Calamity. The way things were before this story. Good times, right? Well, jump for joy. You be your old self again. Think of all those times that didn't go your way. All of life's little setbacks. Imagine if you could have another go at them. No mistakes. Anyone you've ever hurt, come on, sit still. You listening? Everything you've ever done, you could do it over. And wouldn't that be grand? Wouldn't you agree? Well, I guess there's nothing more to say. Ah, who am I kidding? Look, there's something else. A confession. How come I know so much about the Bastion? Well, I designed the place. But that's beside the point. There's one problem with a place that sets things back to a bygone time. You can't test it. So you're probably wondering, if the Calamity happened already, what's to stop it from happening again after the Bastion does its thing? The answer is... I don't know. You follow me? Come on, keep your chin up. It won't be long now. What do you mean you think there's another way? You got ideas about another way, let's hear them. Why would you even want another way? Unless, unless you wanted to stay here with us. Well, that's sweet and all, but I don't know if I can stick around. The weight of the calamity. It's on our shoulders. We can't just let it go. Sure you don't need a drink? The Bastion does have another function. Strictly speaking, in case of trouble, it's where everyone agreed to go. Then, once everyone was here, as many as we could carry, we detonate the cores, and we take off. That way, all of us could leave the city together. Oh, mother, I don't know. He should have been home by now. Heavy, ain't it? You're wondering if there ain't some other way out of this mess. It's all right. I can tell. But why would you even want another way? Unless, if ever the monument blew out and we couldn't repair it, we could still evacuate. First, we'd round up as many folks as we could carry. Next, we'd detonate the cores and we'd take off away from here. Of course, that would mean no going back. Ever. But then again, you know Zolf and his countrymen won't be giving up that shard without a fight, don't you? Zolf and the Ura. All they want now is to see the Bastion fall. The Bastion, to the Ura, is a symbol of the city that brought the Calamity upon them. When Zolf read your father's journal, it was more than he could take. The Calamity tore his world apart. Your father's journal hit him even harder. Zolf dedicated his life to a lasting peace between the Ura and Ceylandia. He can't have imagined the city would try to wipe the Ura out. Worse yet, 
one of his own people was forced to do the deed. Your father, Zolf ain't lost every shred of decency though, has he? He tried to warn you about his plans. He tried to warn the kid. For Zolf, this ain't a personal matter. It ain't a simple matter of pride either. All the same, Zolf's plans ain't gonna succeed. I can see it now. The kid in one corner, and Zolf in the other. Ain't much of a fight. Kid saves Zolf once, but I don't think he'd make the same mistake. I wouldn't. Don't you worry, though. Once the Bastion's restored, it'll all be alright. You ain't still thinking about that whole leaving the city thing, are you? Kid's probably dealt with Zolf by now. It reminds me of myself when I was his age. I ever tell you about those days? It's such a shame, but that's life. One thing's for sure. The era can't be happy that the kid followed Zolf all the way home. Although, after talking it over like this, guess I'm beginning to have my doubts. Welcome to the heart of the Bastion. I ain't one for long goodbyes, so here's the deal. Zia and I figure you done the heavy lifting, so you get to do the honors. We can tell you how to work this thing if you got any questions. Don't be shy now. You can undo the calamity here and now. Go on, kid. And before I forget, thank you. Always wondered what the motherland was like. Not that it matters anymore. Zolf only brought more ruin to the Ura. No wonder they didn't take kindly to him. You've got one thing left to do, so you hang on to that badge. Besides, you earned it. Don't let anything you've done get to you. You can save all those creatures here and now. He told me your story while you were away. I just want you to know. I don't want to forget it. I've already seen the past. I want to see what's left of the world. With the both of you. Zolf tried to talk me into joining him. I tried to talk him out of it. I guess we both failed. When I returned to my people, I told them this place could help them. And they hated me for it. Any moment I'd want to live again happened after the Calamity, not before. It's finished. Now close your eyes. It'll be over soon. So long, kid. Maybe I'll see you in the next one. Oh, mother. And here I thought you'd had enough of me by now. We can't go back no more. But I suppose we could go wherever we please. It's finished. Now, close your eyes. It'll be over soon. You're done good. Your deeds may be forgotten, but your actions will live on. I suppose all that's left to be done is to try and remember this moment. So long, kid. Maybe I'll see you in the next one. Oh, mother. Been here I thought you'd had enough of me by now. You could have undone the calamity itself. But instead... You want to stay in a world like this? I gotta admit, kid, I haven't given too much thought to that idea. We can't go back no more. But I suppose we could go wherever we please. Hey, kid, good to see you. Just go with your gut. You'll do the right thing. Hey, you made it. I guess this thing's really going to let us relive our lives. But I don't want to forget this. If I could be any place I wanted, I'd stay right here. We could go anywhere in the world. When I finally found my people, I told them we could help. They just took me for a traitor. Glad you showed up. Ready to get this over with? So, let's see. You can either prevent the calamity, or stick around with me and Rex. I'd hate to be in your shoes. So, let's see. You can either prevent the calamity, or stick around with me and him. I'd hate to be in your shoes. It's finished. Now nah, sit tight. It'll be over soon. No matter what happens next. You're done good. I suppose all that's left is to try and remember this moment. The Bastion's gonna take us back to a better time. Before any of this. My people will forget everything you've done. And each other. Though after all we've been through, I find that hard to believe. So long, kid. Maybe I'll see it in the next one. Ceylandia, we're coming home.
Oh, mother. And here I figured you'd had enough of me by now. You could have undone the calamity itself. But instead, you want to stay. In a world like this, I gotta admit, kid, I ain't yet put much thought on that idea. A carrying on. With you here, we can't go back no more. But I suppose we could go. Wherever we please. And if anyone's left out there, I sure would like to see the look in their faces when we dock this thing right on their doorstep. Getting ahead of myself, though. I'm gonna need a first mate. You up for it? Getting ahead of myself, though. I'm gonna need a first mate. What do you say? The Breakers used to come here for target practice. Kid ain't had enough of the Breakers barracks. Used to play a little game. See who could bust the most targets in the fewest shots. He's focused. He's armed. And he's off. Kid's gotta prove himself before he earns his prize. He's feeling real proud of that show. He puts on the right solid performance. Kid ain't done bad at all. Well, he just knows he could've done better. There's timing, and then there's perfect timing. A perfect shot just happens in a flash. Takes practice, and a mighty strong bow helps too. The breakers took good care of their own. Kid's thinking, maybe have another go at it. The accused always got a fair shake in Ceylandia. Court is back in session for the kid. Some used to take the bullhead trial. Old ritual from when folks believed there was this godlike bull watching over him. Had to make do with nothing but a shield. Survive the trial without taking a scratch. He'd walk away a free man. A bullhead trial taught folks three things. First, a good defense is a good offense. Second, gotta always watch your back. Third, ain't no godlike bull up there gonna save you. The smarter ones knew when to just step aside and let things go. In time, the bullhead trial became a bit of a contest. The kid pulls it off like it was nothing. The kid pulls through in fine form. The kid makes it out in one piece. The kid's lucky it ain't a real trial. The trial's lessons bear repeating, to be sure. Well, the kid always wanted to compete in the bullhead trial. There's a hint of pride in his eye when he gets back and more than a hint in mine. The trial pushed many a man to his limits. A lot of folks never made it out of there in one piece. Some folks wound up taking the coward's way out. That's the bullhead court. Folks defended themselves there with shields, not words. Windbag Ranch was built for gathering squirt extract and copious supply. Always time for juice and squirts, they used to say. Ain't nothing more healthful. Least the little fellas can't feel a thing. Gotta finish the job before collecting the pay. Some folks showed up to make a fast buck with nothing but a knife. Other folks came to train their throwing arms. Still others used the place to test their finest blades. Some squirts tried to flee on instinct. Best to put them away first, before they rile up the others. Security stood by in case anything should go wrong. There's always more squirts to go around. Kid carves through all of them in a flash. Kid makes short work of them things. Kid cuts all of them down soon enough. Slippery little devils. The ranch was always looking for good help. Kid comes back from Windbag Ranch, smelling good and ripe. Well, the kid's gone and struck terror in the hearts of squirts everywhere. Squirts can be dangerous, like any livestock. The ranch had its share of accidents, all right. Place got awful slippery at times. That's Windbag Ranch. Perfect place to work a blade if you got the stomach for it. Place gets awful slick sometimes. The city's unwanted things all met their end in the yard. Kid pays another visit to the scrapyard for old time's sake. Folks who fouled up would do their time here, smashing things to bits. The quicker they worked, the sooner they could go. The yard rewarded only those who put in an effort. Folks learned to plant their feet and put their backs into it. Others would plot a course to navigate that sea of junk. Some folks invested their earnings to forge even better hammers. The scrapyard started offering incentives. The strongest, fastest folks earned more than their fair share. A good day smashing could feed a family for a week. Had to work real fast for the finest prize. Work too slow and all you got was a sore back. Always plenty there for smashing. Ever want to just smash things for a while? You know where to go. The kids worked the yard before, but that time he just plain destroyed it. Working the yard did have its risks. That's the scrapyard. 
where folks got to smash things and call it community service. Ceylonia's army only took the best, and the best of them trained on Trigger Hill. If you want to master the art of the firearm, then the place to go was Trigger Hill. The Triggers believed they were nothing without their rifles. Nothing beats the feel of shooting a Ceylonian army carbine. Sometimes you had to take care to steady your shot. Sometimes you had to shoot from the hip. The Triggers had clearance to modify their guns however they chose. Some felt the course was too easy, so the Triggers spiced things up a bit. They had to keep moving to avoid getting burned. Kid blows through that course like it was nothing. The kid ain't bad, but the Triggers were better. Takes time to be a fast shot. Go figure. His ears must be ringing after all that shooting. The Ceylonian army would have recruited him in a flash. Trigger Hill was strictly a live ammo exercise. Accidents happened on the hill. The hill's quite a bit steeper now that the calamity's had its way. No place better than trap a shingle for learning to tread light and shoot straight. Kid decides to keep working his aim and footwork on the shingle. Trappers had to tread real careful here, else take a nasty fall. They trained themselves by clearing out the targets while not clearing out the floor. Ground was always covered in bolts that missed their mark. Any good trapper knows never to take a step till the time is right. Best time to pick a new spot was when swapping magazines. In good hands, a custom-tuned repeater could really clean this place up. A good run on the shingle proved worthwhile. Master trappers got what they needed for a better hunt. Expert trappers got something extra to give them an edge. A decent trapper wouldn't walk away empty-handed. They could reset the shingle whenever they wanted. To think a rickety place like the shingle survived, and so little else did. The trappers would have been impressed with how the kid handled the shingle. Most trappers couldn't get through without a few scrapes. That's Trapper Shingle, only place in the city to go to get certified with a repeater. Ever felt a Zolwood gourd? Like picking up broken glass barehanded. Kid takes a little personal time for just him and his favorite musket. At Zolwood Orchard, Marshals learned to make every shot count. The trick was to pop all those nasty gourds without wasting ammo. Had to catch a bunch of those gourds in a single shot. Funny thing about muskets is they work best up close. Marshals like to fine-tune their muskets to get better results. The orchard grew over so quick, the marshals made it worth clearing out. The best of the best cleared the course in just a few shots. It took a keen eye, not an itchy trigger finger. They kept on training till they mastered those muskets. Most marshals didn't get far on their first few tries. Plenty of gourds to go around, even now. Marshals did more than just stand around shooting, of course. Kid probably could have made himself marshal one day. A man who fell on his hindquarters in the orchard wasn't likely to hear the end of it. That Zolwood Orchard. Nice, quiet place to show a musket a good time. At Zolwood Grove, marshals learned to make every shot count. That Zolwood Grove. A nice, quiet place to show a musket a good time. A man who fell on his hind quarters in the grove wouldn't soon hear the end of it. Welcome to Grady Incinerator, home of the hottest wings east of Ceylandia. Know how we kept the city clean? We put all our trash in Grady Incinerator. In all seriousness, the incinerator was a dump, and it had a problem with peckers. Blast the things would swoop in and spread trash all around, until we started using fire. We couldn't just torch them all at once. We had to use restraint. It was a dirty job, but at least it was quick. Peckers that flocked together were easy pickings. A few modifications to a fire bellows could really keep those birds away. Wasn't any other way to teach those peckers some respect. Keeping the incinerator clean was a paying job, but not a pleasant one. The peckers were willing to fight tooth and nail for all that trash. Those peckers mean business. Incinerators ain't the safest of places. You'd almost think those peckers like getting cooked. Who knows why we fought so hard to defend our own trash. Too bad we can't all fly. To prepare for the wilds, Ceylandia's brushers practice at Camp Dunsey. The brushers were Ceylandia's field agents, and their training was harsh. Had to navigate a maze of pincushions with nothing but a pike. It's a dangerous test for a dangerous job. The rules said he couldn't use any fancy footwork. Just your brains and your pike. You had to find a path through the maze as quick as you could. One well-placed throw could take out several of those ugly critters. Health tonics were off limits at Camp Dunsey. They said they made you weak. To prep for the course, the brushers could modify their pikes however they wanted. There wasn't time to squash every pincushion. Just the ones in the way. A good enough run at Camp Dunsey could get you promoted to captain on the spot. If you did alright at Camp Dunsey, 
you got to go to the wilds. Just getting through the course in one piece was an accomplishment. You can see why the brushers prized those pikes of theirs. The wilds ain't so scary now, are they? Sometimes the course was brutal. Camp Dante earned its notoriety. Once you started the course, they made you finish. You have to think fast to survive the wilds. And none thought faster than the slingers. The slingers could plug you full of holes faster than you could say draw. They could shoot their pistols with the speed of a machine. They knew just when to start shooting and when to stop. Those pistols could spit out rounds just as quick as you could pull the trigger. Learning to hold your fire could be its own challenge. The slingers like to edge each other out using customized pistols. Eventually, it all comes down to reflexes. I gotta say... Kid's the fastest shot I ever seen. No matter how fast you are, you can always get faster. The slingers were much quicker than the average pistolier. Well, even the slingers weren't quick enough to escape the calamity. He blew through slinger range like it was nothing. Just cause you're fast don't mean you gotta be reckless. Ceylandia's armada was a glorious sight, and our ship's mortars were unstoppable. If you got a thing for heavy artillery, then I've got the place for you. At Boundless Bay, our Navy put those mortars through a rigorous inspection. Had to use squirts to simulate explosive impact on the surface of the sea. If a galleon mortar couldn't squish enough squirts, it was simply replaced. Galleon skippers needed to be patient, needed to fire at just the right times. A variety of modifications could be used to enhance the power of a mortar. Choosing targets with those mortars was one of the trickiest parts. You could almost see the fireworks over Boundless Bay. Sounds like the kid's mortar's in tip-top shape. Galleon skippers took a while to get a feel for firing those things. Too bad about the armada, but at least one of those mortars survived. Good thing we got to that mortar before the beasts of the wild learned how to use it. You had to be crazy to want to swim in Boundless Bay. The Ura probably didn't know they were being watched from Mansur Observatory. The Mansers conducted their most secretive research far west of the city. It was the perfect spot to test inventions, like that hot gal I introduced to the kid. Only trouble was something about the place drove the windbags crazy. A hot gal like that can be a real handful. Got a pointer in the right direction. Whatever gets in her way is in a world of hurt, but she ain't the fastest thing. You could cause a lot of collateral damage with her if you ain't careful. She's designed to be fine-tuned, just need the proper parts. The more crowded it gets, the more trouble you could cause with a single shot. Well, that experiment was a rousing success. Kid sure knows how to show that gal a good time. The kid and that gal could use more work on that relationship. It's hard to get a handle on her. Not like we can put that gal through the paces around here. It's a shame that we need that gal right now. But at least she's on our side. She's not as dainty as she looks. The Mansers conducted their most secretive research far east of the city. It was the perfect spot to test something no one's meant to know about. If a thing like that takes getting used to, got a pointer in the right direction. Kids got that contraption all figured out. Not much left of the observatory when the smoke clears. When the windbags caused enough trouble, the observatory would shut down. If the power of the calamity is safe in anybody's hands, it's safe in his. If only the Mansers could have seen the kid playing around with their favorite toy. Not a good idea to drop that thing. Best stand well clear of that impact. Zolf brought his antique smoking pipe all the way from the terminals. Poor kid collapses after just one drag. By the time his body hits the ground, his mind's already someplace else. The past. Only good thing ever come out of the past. It's history. The past catches up with the kid. Hardly had a moment's rest since all this started. Fair to say he's led a hard life. Supposing what he says in his sleep ain't no lie. He never knew his old man. His mama was a troubadour with pure white hair. Having hair like his mama's did the kid no favors while he was growing up. School ain't working out, so the kid signs up for a turn on the rippling walls. Make his mama some money. Thanks to folks like the kid... The walls kept Ceylandia safe from whatever's out there. The elements, the aura, you name it. Once the kid done his time, he hurried on home. Turns out his mama's time was done too. The city had nothing for him. The money he'd been sending home was nowhere to be found either. So what the kid do? Why he went right on back to the walls for another five years? In the history of Ceylandia, nobody's ever volunteered for a second shift on the walls. Out there, kid learned to fend for himself, learned to build, learned to break. In time, the kid earned good standing with the marshals. 
They trusted him to scout out farther than anybody. One night, on one of his expeditions, the ground beneath him shuddered, cracked, and split apart. He saw nothing where the world used to be. The calamity happened just like that. All the kid had to work with was his hammer and the clothes on his back. Through twisted streets, he ran with nothing but the city seal and an old stranger's voice to guide him. Well, he finally arrived at Ceylandia's vaunted safe haven. He and no one else. But then, all he got was more thankless work from a man who ain't even asked his name. Sure, I may be the one who dreamt up the walls and the bastion, but the kid made him real. Not me. I'd like to say I'll never forget him, or what he's doing, what he's done. I surely would. What was I saying? Anyway. Wait, where was I? Maybe now's not the time. Well, what does it matter? Ah, the past don't matter for nothing now. Well, he wakes up feeling fine. Kid just had too much to smoke that time. Kid takes another drag, goes out like a light. Third time's a charm, right? Wrong. All right, no more asking about that smoking pipe. Deal? There's something you should know about the kid, but let me take it from the top. Ever tell you how the kid got himself wrapped up in this mess to begin with? He never knew his old man, but he had his mama to take care of. Frail thing with pure white hair like his. Having his mama's hair did the kid no favors while he was growing up, but he learned to hold his own out there. Through twisted streets, he ran with nothing but the city crest and an old stranger's voice to guide him. Knocks him into an uneasy sleep. What's he thinking? Well, let me see if I got this straight. I only heard it once. Once there was a normal Ura girl, but she wasn't born in the tasseled terminals like the rest of her people. She was from Ceylandia. Her folks were orphaned in the war, taken in and raised inside the city on condition they would never return to the terminals. Ura refugees who came into the city had to stay for life. It was a way to reduce the risk of city secrets leaking out. The mama passed away from burthen complications, leaving the girl trapped inside that city with no one but her father. Her father was sharper than a brusher's pike, so he got a job working for the city's mansers. His daughter barely saw him. Her father told her nothing of her Ura heritage. He told her nothing of the mansers. It's for your own good, he said. She took to studying the arts, learned more through music than history books, gained a knack for strings and songs. At first, she tried to be like other girls, but her classmates spread word that her father was an Ura traitor, selling out the city. One young man stood up for her, or so he led her to believe. He knew much of her heritage, and she grew fond of him. The young man convinced her to take him to her family den to meet her father. Spoke of how he wanted to meet a man from the terminals. When the young man greeted her father in the Ura's native language, her father flew into a fit of rage and threw them out. The young man never told her that the Ura's native language is not to be used by foreigners. To do so is a terrible insult. It was then that she decided to escape. The two of them could flee the city together, and go to the Tazzle Terminals. They would hide inside a garbage bin until it got ingested by a scumbag, then let him slosh on out of the city for disposal. Her plan almost succeeded, but the authorities were already there when that scumbag sidled up to the city walls. The young man had sent the authorities a tip, told him her father was using her to sell secrets to the Tazzle Terminals. She and her father were arrested for treason, but her father got a deal, returned to work for the Mansers, and she'd go free. Before they parted ways for the last time, her father whispered a desperate plea. Hurry home to the den, and lock yourself in. She did as she was told, and deep down underground inside that den, she found a journal written in her father's hand. The next day, the door to the den turned to ash. The girl came up for air, and she saw the calamity all around her. Now, where were we? Lost my train of thought there. Well, you know how it goes. Ah, what's the use? Well, I digress. I've said a lot about the kid, but he ain't the only one wrapped up in all this. We've all got stories worth telling. Kid ain't the only one. Zolf. Very soon the kid's gonna have to face that man again. For the last time. They met on the worst day of Zolf's life. There in the hanging gardens, he aimed to throw it all away. It wasn't the first time Zolf had nothing to lose. He was born to a simple Ura couple, 
who didn't last long before plague took him. He grew up hungry in the tunnels of the Tazel terminals, so he took the stealing from a Ceylonian missionary living there. He once got sloppy with his thieving hands. The missionary caught him, but didn't rat him out. Instead, he offered to take him in. That missionary raised Zolf like a gentleman, like he was his own son, taught him theology, history, and mercy. When the missionary passed away, Zolf promised to continue his work to bring about a lasting peace between the Ura and Ceylandia. Zolf started teaching the missionaries wisdom to any Ura who would listen, and listen they did. He advocated tolerance and argued that the Ura should atone for the war. He believed the city had much to teach his people. However, Zolf felt he could only do so much in the Tazel terminals. He needed Ceylandia to know the Ura had changed. He decided to do what the missionary did many years before. He left the city of his youth to brave a savage land. The journey was hard, but he knew how to fend for himself. And then at last, Zolf saw the rippling walls on the horizon. He endeared himself to city folk straight away, and in turn he fell in love with the city and its people. One in particular. This young lady was fascinated by the Ura, but she never met anyone like Zolf. She told him she knew all the city's best kept secrets. The Hanging Gardens was their favorite spot, it was there that Zolf clasped her hands and proposed in proper Ceylandian style. He celebrated with his friends long into the night, joy and revelry like he'd never seen. Too bad he couldn't remember it all. He woke up alone underground inside the Ura Ceylandian War Memorial, built like an Ura den. But something was wrong. He emerged from that hole in the ground into a waking nightmare. Everything that wasn't gone was twisted upside down. The world was frozen, air thick with ash. What few faces he saw on the street stared back at him with gray and vacant eyes. He found his wife-to-be asleep inside her home, but when he reached out to her, she joined with all the ashes in the sky. And so Zolf returned to where he proposed in the hanging gardens, and there he stood as if the gods would answer him. It's all right. Don't worry about it. No hard feelings. That's okay. That story don't end well anyway. The calamity took everything from us. Might be it took even more from Zolf. Zolf had difficulty telling me a story. Haven't heard it. I could understand why. You don't get to be my age without learning a thing or two about what's what. But the most valuable lessons come early in life. I ain't much for worldly things. Though all these years I've held on to a stash of old books from when I was young. There's one old book in particular I still like to read from time to time. It covers the important things, in a manner of speaking. Here we go. A is for Kobe, the goddess of oath and abandon. Make a promise, and the chastened maid will hold you to it. B is for Breaker. He's faster than a fork of lightning, and his aim is always true. If news needs spreading, tell it to a breaker. C is for core, a perfect bit of stone found deep underground. It makes the city shine day and night. Is there anything it can't do? D is for dread rum, a potent spirit brewed from a foul-smelling plant that grows in the wilds. One taste will sharpen your senses. E is for evacuation. In an emergency, stay calm. Leave your belongings and make your way to the nearest safe haven. F is for foundation. A solid plot of land for building anything you can imagine. Even grand ideas start small. G is for Garmouth, the god of purpose and folly. The crippled duke reminds us that good intentions are nothing on their own. H is for Hensa, goddess of pain and pleasure. You can't have one without the other. The Veiled Widow makes sure of it. I is for In Case of Trouble, a song grown famous across the land, dedicated to the pioneering spirit of Ceylandia. J is for Javel, the god of health and atrophy. We each have the tower keeper's strength in us, until that strength runs out. K is for Kid, a guy or gal just like you. Don't be in such a hurry to grow up since there's nothing a kid can't do. L is for Lemaine, the god of hope and despair. The Mason King knows that success and failure are all in the mind. M is for Messiah, our goddess of loss and longing. 
We all are born from the Lorn Mother, and in the end, we all return to her. And as for Nordy, the bird boy, who's always there to bring a smile at the hanging gardens, thanks to his feathered friends. Oh, as for Alec, our young god at chance and whim, the carefree son lives forever in the moment. The rest of us can only try. P is for Pith, the god of commotion and order. When the wakeful bull is calm, let's all do our part to keep him that way. Q is for Queen Anne, the notorious ankle gator from the wilds. She can even dig her way into rotten children's dreams. R is for Rothus, the god of thirst and plenty. The Gorgian host reminds us to always know when we've had enough. S is for Scumbag, a big lumpy old fellow who sidles about. He loves eating trash. Just be sure to keep a healthy distance from him. T is for Trigger, the army's sharpest shooter. Take pride in Ceylandia's mounted soldiers. They risk it all to keep us safe. U is for Ura, our pale neighbors to the east, whose homes are underground. Each day we learn to live in harmony. V is for Vigil, an act in remembrance. The sacrifices of our forefathers gave us a new beginning here in Ceylandia. W is for Weepin' Nelly, the Langston River's fastest little ferry barge. We couldn't have crossed that river without her help. X is for XP, the measure of a man's drink limit. Before setting foot in a distillery, be sure to have proof of your XP on hand. Y is for you, Drake, the god of impulse and bravery. Each time the morning stallion stamps his hoof, somebody out there makes up his mind. Z is for Zolwood, a tough old plant whose gourds make great target practice. Whatever you do, don't eat them. The end. There's nothing after Z. Used to be one more page in here, though, before somebody tore it out. Know what it said? The last page of this little book, it was about the author, and now this was the first story he ever told. The last page of this book was about the author. Didn't say much, but the imagination has a way of filling in the gaps. Whoa now, still with me? Now let me think, keep going or what? Sure you want to hear this? Well, that's enough of that. This ain't about me, though you might as well know where I'm coming from. Ain't good manners to talk about oneself. Not that we need manners anymore. X is for nothing. Strangers letter in the mix. Yet even the strangers letter has its use as you couldn't have a mailbox without one. Kid's ready to slice him up and pound him to bits if they get in his way. With the bow and repeater at the ready, Kid aims to keep a safe distance. Nothing takes the edge off like a squirt cider and a hearty punch. Chases a doom shine with a leech aid, and now he's itching for a fight. The hopscotch and the squirt cider make him hoppin' mad. Kid's lifelong friend puts on a few pounds of muscle. Kid gets to know his lifelong friend a little better. Kid rattles up that repeater's old bones. Kid whips that repeater's old bones into better shape. Kid braces his bow just like the breakers did. Kid fletches arrows that can pierce clean through in proper breaker fashion. Kid puts a better balance on that mean old blade so it'll cut deeper still. Kid saws down the edge of that mean old blade so it'll leave a lasting impression. The hot gal from the arsenal's making quite a splash. All she needed was a little love. Now the hot gal from the arsenal knows just what she's aiming for. The Skyway. Now the kid can ride the wind to distant lands. The Bastion. Ceylandia's highest point escaped the calamity somehow. The rippling walls. Ceylandia's border. Kid's done enough time there already. The soul regret. Used to be one of the finest social establishments in the city, the Wharf District. Folks sailed deep into the boundless sea from here. The Sundown Path. Lovely place for a stroll. Before the calamity, that is. The Shipping Trade House. Stored all sorts of fineries from beyond the boundless sea. The Hanging Gardens. Folks used to go here to relax from their relaxing. The Breaker Barracks. Many straight shooters learned their way here. The Melton Pot. Place hoarded all sorts of fineries from beyond the boundless sea. Kid splits up that blade into a bunch of vicious shards. The workman ward. Them windbags used to keep the city humming along here. A little squirt cider makes doom shine easier to swallow. Leech aid with a glass of squirt cider is good for the health. Hopscotch and doom shine. Now that's a potent pairing.
Ain't much kid can handle with hammer and bow in hand. A repeater goes with a hammer better than a box of nails. Machete and carbine still go well together, just like in the war. The repeater and machete, favorite choices of the Ura hunters we once fought. Walk by a kid with a machete and a mortar, you just keep on walking. With that mortar and hammer, he's like a one-man demolition squad. Figures it's a good time to put his two favorite firearms to the test. Kid's ready to hit him fast and hit him hard. A bow and a machete, every bit as effective as the fancier stuff. Sometimes arrows ain't enough, so Kid packs something bigger just in case. Kid ain't taking chances, takes all the firepower he can carry. Kid gets a better grip on that hammer he's always carrying. Kid fletches a fine set of arrows, would've made the breakers proud. Kid knows even the finest blade ain't nothing without a good strong grip. The lost and found, here Kid takes fragments of the old world and makes them whole again. The memorial, here Kid can pay respect to the old world and earn it in kind. All it takes is some fragments and the bastion makes it good as new. Finders keepers, it wasn't fixed, it was unbroken. There's Pith Orchard, built in honor of the bull, and folks like Zulf who pray to him. That's the edge of the wilds, where Jawson and his boys disappeared. The shards were the backup to the backup plan, should still be out there in the wilds. Rothus Lagoon, even the brushes stopped going there, didn't like being eaten. The less said about Jawson Bog, the better. That place will eat your mind. Point Lemaine's Grand Rail once brought the riches of the wild right to our doorstep. The forge. Kid can fix up his weapons real nice here. The next shard should be farther out there in the wilds. Well, look who's back. Ready to keep going. Hensa. A Kobe. Lemaine. Pith. Javel. Udrig. Rothus. Messia. Olek. Garmuth. Behold. The Pantheon. Think the gods are gonna help? Kid's lifelong friends looking fit to keep on fighting. Ain't never letting go of his old friend with a sturdy grip like that. A sail hammer's only as strong as its spine. And that's a strong spine. He put some finishing touches on the business end of that thing. Now the weight of the world's behind his every swing. Turns out those old bones still have some spark in them. That ought to make those fangs sink in nice and deep. Now he can shoot that fang repeater all day long. Takes a careful touch to rattle those bones like that. You don't want to know what he did to that thing. But believe me, it works. With a good length of meese gut, that bow's like new again. Kid packs a special surprise in every one of those arrows. His bow's looking lean and mean like a prize fighter. Arrows like that can practically find their own way. Ain't that the finest breaker's bow you ever seen? A little Zolwood oil and that blade shines like a light. War machetes are so quick you gotta keep a good grip on them. Points just don't get any sharper than that. A solid frame can put an extra sting in every slice. Now that's what I call a knife. You want to tune a scrap musket, you start with the barrel. The marshals learn to pack those shells full of fire. To master the musket, you gotta get rid of the recoil. Now we're looking at some serious firepower. The marshals would have been downright jealous. To fix a brush's pike, you just need a good length of knife bark. Don't want that thing leaving your hands until you decide it's time. Gotta make sure the pointy end's fastened on real tight. When you've got a solid balance, you've got what you need. Any brush's pike can cut to the bone, but that one can cut through it. Takes a lot of moving pieces to make a dependable sidearm. He's made a right comfortable bed for all those bullets. That ought to give those dueling pistols a little extra kick. You'd never guess those things been to the wilds and back. That'll spice things up next time he gets in trouble. That's the way to make every shot count. Even the army never issued carbines in such fine shape. It's no longer a weapon, it's a precision instrument. Nothing makes a gun so dangerous as a keen eye. Taught him a little something from my days on the front. At least it won't get cold round here with that thing around. On the inside, a fire bellows ain't nothing like its more popular air-spitting cousin. Without an insulated air intake, that thing's liable to blow up on you. Toughest thing about using that gas can is keeping a grip on it. That thing wasn't always meant to be a weapon. But there's no denying it now. That mortar's gonna leave a lasting impression. Taught him an old trick from a galleon gunner I once knew. Wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of those. The Armada sure could've used one of these back in the day. 
A pinch of fairy dust, and it's all set. First step to learning the Calamity Cannon is knowing about the machinery overrides. Now, who would have taught a kid to do a thing like that? Good thing I didn't throw away the manual. Take my word for it. Don't ever drop one of those. Looks like a little science project is all set. And that's everything. Mother knows he's paid his dues in that forge. Words can't express what happened, but they're all I got. I've asked a lot of the kid, but this is something he's done on his own. Sometimes I want to ask him, why do any of this? But truth is, I don't want to know. Never thought I'd see that thing completed. Not in this life. The valediction. Just another one of my sketches. Nothing more. The dynasty. To the families of the city. All reunited. The culture. A still life of old unwanted keepsakes. The service. For all the men and women who serve Ceylandia. The country. She's all the pieces now. But still looking good. The mercy. The windbags ain't the only beast that drew a bad lot. The masons. We built the city strong. Now there's only two of us. The breakers. Ain't no one could outrun them. Or their arrows. The trappers. Daring bunch of fools. They'll be missed. The menders. They had thankless jobs. The most important kind. The gravers. The arm of justice. They seemed unstoppable. The marshals. Kept the city's peace. They can rest easy now. The slingers. The wilds were their calling. The brushers. They moved in shadows. But the calamity found them. The triggers. My brothers. Bravest men I ever knew. The cinders. Kept the city good and warm. Made it thrive. The skippers. Delivered us from the motherland. The mansers. They knew everything. Even if it cost them. The inspiration. A forge can fashion anything. The city, its riches nothing but fragments now. The conscience, we haven't lost everything, long as we have that. The sanctuary, if we can build, we can rebuild. The faith, mother, this one's for you. Kids ready to get real personal with hammer and musket in hand. A pair of slinger pistols is just the ticket if a hammer's too slow. Can't decide between a hammer and a brusher's pike? Take both. A hammer and an army carbine. When I was a fighting man, I used the very same. Got a feeling those tools ain't just for use at the old forge. The power of the calamity ain't well understood, but a hammer sure is. Doesn't hurt having a couple of trusty old guns on hand. Kid must think he's the fastest shot in all the land. He probably is. With pike and repeater in hand, He's like a man come straight from the wilds. Now he can light him up or pin him down. Maybe both. Fill him with needles or blast him to bits. Tough call. A bow ain't much good in a crowd, but a musket sure is. Even our lightest range weapons are not to be taken lightly. Kid don't always care for fancy guns and things. A bow and pike will do just fine. Best not let him get too close if you only got a bow and a carbine. Bow and bellows make a strange and fearsome team. We fought with bows for centuries. Calamity cannons? Not so much. Anything survives a musket shot ought to be quick work for that blade. Want to stay alive in the wilds? Pack a pair of pistols and a good blade. Normally I wouldn't care to see a kid with a pike and machete in either hand. We could have a fine old cookout with that stuff. Too bad that's not the plan. If there's anything that blade can't split open, a cannon ought to do it. Nothing subtle about those guns, but maybe that's the point. Want to keep the wilds at bay? Pack yourself a musket and a pike. No more fooling around. Time to roll out the big guns and get this over with. Ever see a kid with a musket and a fire bellows? Bit of a disturbing sight. That's some heavy-duty hardware. Not exactly the most delicate pairing. Kid loaded down with some of Ceylandia's finest firearms. He's a spitting image of Slinger Jawson with that pike and them pistols. Now that's a lot of guns for just one kid, but he can hold his own. Wouldn't have thought to bring a bellows to a shootout, but it just might work. With all that firepower, kid looks like he's ready to raid a fort. Anything gets past that cannon, those pistols can finish it quick. Sometimes a brusher's pike just ain't enough. That's what the carbine's for. Stick em and cook em. Or the other way around. 
Makes no difference. A pike and a galley and a mortar. Now that's some terror from the high seas. Long reach and plenty of power. Now that's a scary combination. When one type of firepower ain't enough, there's always the carbine and the bellows. Kid makes me nervous sometimes, strutting around with all those guns. Well, if you can't burn it, you can always blow it to mother on high, right? No matter what he's gonna face out there, it'll burn. Okay, now that's just plain overkill. I mean, come on. Squirt cider will toughen you right up. Too bad about the musty aftertaste. Dread rum's brewed from swamp weeds, so its effect is as bold as its flavor. Fetching fizz is like a mouthful of nails, but the benefits are worth it. Hopscotch is light as sea foam, but you'll feel it in your legs right away. Hearty punch is so zesty, it'll let you carry on through the worst of times. Fallen malt is filled with crunchy minerals that'll keep you safe out on them rocks. A sip of lunkhead liqueur will toughen you up. Too bad it's like drinking a saddlebag. Bull brandy is thicker than paint. Makes your skin feel as tough as knife bark. If you're feeling low, count on the buttery flavor of our own bastion bourbon. Doom shines a bit of an acquired taste. Like a mouthful of horseradish. Black rye like hot vineapple chowder on a cold day. Brings back memories. Cinder brick stout sure goes down smooth, then stays in your gut like a rock. Champagne's made with scumbag extract, hence the barley aroma and the nausea. Now, whale ale ain't made from real whale, but it'll make you strong like one. Where whiskey has no scent, but tastes like a peppered boot heel, it's not for everyone. Folks say mender mead's good for you, it's like an herb garden in full bloom. Leech aid so sour it'll perk you right up when you're feeling low. Life wine so rich they say it's brought men back from the brink for one last taste. Grava gimlet tastes different the longer you swish it around. Miraculous stuff. Stay absinthe is like drinking a cool breeze. Just don't go spitting needles everywhere. I'll see you in the next one. Hi, target acquired. Firing. Gotcha. There you are. I see you. Hostile test subject. Anomaly detected. I see a thing. I see a thing. Thing sighted. Protecting child. Protecting child. Children stand clear. I'll help you child. Searching. Are you still there? Target lost. Can I help you? Would you come over here? Thanks anyway. Take me with you. Take me with you. Please do not leave. Will you come back? I'll just wait here. Why? I'm fine. Goodbye. Oh. Wow, 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 wow. Hey. Ow, ow. It burns. Hello. Searching. Canvassing. Sentry mode activated. Is anyone there? Deploying. Activated. Who are you? I'm afraid of heights. Unexpected coordinates. Unexpected coordinates. Am I a dream? Why am I here? Location unknown. Location unknown. File not found. I want to go home. Chromatic data overflow. The floor is moving. Hello child. Hello child. Is this sin? Our world. She's done. But there's a way to put her back together. So better get ready. Cause mother only knows what's out there floating on them rocks. And remember, you ain't in this alone. That's a promise. You find an old boot? Plant it. You find a rusty old pocket watch? Plant it. Find a copy of Terminator 2 on Laserdisc? Plant it. You find a pair of socks? Plant it. You find a Milli Vanilli cassette tape? Plant it. You find a Mint on Card original trilogy Jawa action figure? Plant it. You find an unopened Marvel Legends Spider-Man? Plant it. Much obliged for all your time and attention today. Blam! Shoots one right in the eye. Bags a pack of them rascals in a single shot. A lick of that whip sends him tumbling down. Gets one square in the kisser. Blam! He's a natural good shot. Sure ain't afraid to use that knife of his. He holds back, but he probably shouldn't. Nothing like a repeater for mopping up stragglers. That hammer's made for building. But it ain't its only use. Well, that's enough for now. Some other time, then. It's kill or be killed, kid. Kid made it to the fifth wave.
tenth wave. Ain't many made it this far. Nice. Kid made it to the fifteenth wave. Damn. All the way up to the twentieth wave. This is it. The final wave. The kid done it. As if there was ever any doubt. Now who's responsible for this? Whoa, kid. Save some of them for old age. Kid don't go down that easy. He clears his throat. Kid's got something to say. He's got something on his mind. Gotta say something. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, I dropped the page. This microphone smells funny. I get the feeling I'm supposed to say something here. I just realized I haven't eaten in weeks. We didn't get this far yet. Damn nation, what am I supposed to say? The kid's gotta move forward, not down. And then, he falls to his death. I'm just fooling. Kid better watch his step. Soon enough, he's down to the last planter. So the kid gets to planting. It ain't too hard. Kid stops to ponder things for a while. Waiting solves nothing, but the kid still does it. He pauses for a spell, plotting his next move. Kid finds a memento from a girl he knew. Always used to fancy her. Someone's memento, just lying in the road. All what's left of the way things used to be. The kid pockets a memento from a breaker, once the fastest man in the land. It's a memento from a tough little stable hand. Never believed in Meese. Too bad he couldn't be here now. A memento from an old jailer. All his friends, he put away himself. This belonged to a vine apple farmer. Choked on a seed while looking on in horror as the world twisted over. Now that little number once belonged to yours truly. Never done told the kid though. Didn't want it back. A mountaineer dropped this when his mountain started flying. And dropped him. Time out. All right, hold up a sec. You find a pair of socks? Plant it. Find an old shoe? Plant it. You find an old boot? Plant it. Plant whatever you feel like. You find a rusty old pocket watch? Plant it. Now, where were we? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, listen good. Let's continue.